without further ado, let's get ready to bring on the 19th head football 19th. coach of Florida the Agricultural and Mechanical coach. University. The head ball coach. Our head ball coach. None other <laughs> than Coach James Cozy, the third. Coach Cozy, how you doing this evening? I'm doing well, guys. How are you guys? What's going on, Coach? Hey, we, coach. We, 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 I haven't heard Coach in a long time. Yes, sir. That's old school there, yeah, boy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I never knew how old school that was until I heard, you know, I thought that was just a an Eddie Jackson thing until I heard some other older elder Rattlers saying it. I'm like, okay, I didn't know that was a thing. I, that just, oh, yeah. I, I, I thought I thought while the coaching search was going on, I thought somebody spelled coach one time. <laughs> I, you know, I, uh, I thought it was a misspelling, but no, it wasn't a misspelling. They 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 no. knew exactly what they were spelling. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Uh well, coach, you you've been uh you've been in the in the position now for uh what full time position for about two or three weeks. Uh yeah. what what has this you know getting boots to the ground and just kind of getting everything going? What what has this period been like? Uh, for for you uh, and, and your family, and just kind of getting adjusted to everything. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I think that you know, you kind of took the head coaching role uh, January first. You know, when everything was going on. Um, you know, I, b- before everything kind of happened with Coach Simmons, him and I had some you know some some conversations uh, beforehand, and uh, you know, he expressed kind of what was going on and what he was hoping would happen. Um, and then, you know, then after he, you know, ends up, you know, going to Duke, uh, you know, A.D. Sykes and I had a conversation as well. So, you know, the, 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 the opportunity was during that time frame, attack this like you're the head football coach at Florida a and and that's, and that's what, that's what I did. You know, you know, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't go in there and, not, and sit down on our hands and things like that. We, we, we thought it was extremely important to make sure we took care of the players that we still had here. You know, obviously we lost some guys for graduation and things of that, of that nature, but, and our, our team was starting classes. Uh, Coach For- Coach Forney, our director of strength and conditioning, he was he was starting to lift, you know, lift the guys. So um, we, the staff that was there and myself included, we you know the, the thought process was make sure we took care of the current guys that are that are that, that would be suiting up for us in 2024. Mm-hmm. And and I'm I'm just I'm curious, Coach, as you know, and I know I've I've watched a lot of interviews that you've done, so I'm um, I know hopefully we'll get a chance to talk about. The recruiting class in in sort of uh, maybe one of your your first time since the uh, uh, since the uh, the um, the recruiting special um, and maybe even some new guys and things like that. But I'm curious about the move uh, when you were in Canada uh, coaching, and so the move to come back into Florida or back into the states and with Coach Simmons. Talk a little bit about you know, the, the, what brought you to Florida A&M, uh, what brought you back in to the States? Uh, and, and did you have visions or aspirations of, of, uh, of being a head coach or may, maybe, you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if you had a time frame on it, but, but just talk a little bit about where you were um, as your time in Canada was coming to an end. Well, I, I had spent seven years in Canada. You know, a lot of people didn't even know that I was out there a lot, uh, besides my mentors or, you know, my, my friends within the coaching range, but, you know, throughout that time frame, I had, I had three other opportunities during that seven year period where I had opportunities to come back down here, come back down, you know, come back down south. And, uh, you know, at, at, during that time frame, um, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't the right time. Um, and then, you know, and then, you know, Coach Sharp, you know, who had done a hell of a job here previously, was, was, you know, was moving on to Purdue. Um, I had a couple phone calls in to Coach Smith. Uh, welcome, Mary. I had a couple. I had a couple uh, um, calls into Coach Smith, uh, a couple calls into Coach Simmons, and, and Coach Simmons and I even throughout my time while I was in Canada, we we kept close contact. So um, when this opportunity arose, obviously you know playing at Florida State, you know being a GA at Florida State, th- this was going to be my third opportunity to come back to Tallahassee. It was somewhat of a no brainer. You know the only the only negative part was you know me leaving a football team, you know that I had helped build in Canada, but. You know, I thought my with my wife and my my two boys, I thought it was the best opportunity for me to you know take this. For me, it doesn't make, it might be the last time being asked to come back down, but then also have an opportunity to come back to Florida or come to Florida A and M. It it was a no brainer. True, true. Go ahead, Kelvin. Coach, I'm interested to know where where are we currently 
you know, two weeks in, you just had a recruiting class. You've got a couple of positions uh, where you're going to need to fill on on your staff. Uh, and I and I th- thought I read somewhere where you know by by the beginning of March you hope to have a lot of that filled in. But kind of talk about where you are currently with uh, your staff and, and and where the team is currently with your roster management. Well, I'll say this right. You know, we we lost some really really quality people. Um, they weren't just great coaches. They were they were great people as well. Um, and I, you know, you, you, you're trying to say, well, how are you going to replace, you know, coach Simmons, you know, the head football coach and, you know, the officer coordinator, the, the quarterback coach, the, the, the leader, the leader of the unit. Right. So, you know, it, it's going to be hard to replace him. It's, it's going to be hard to replace defensive coordinator, Ryan Smith. It's going to be hard to replace, you know, Troy Johnson, who was our director of football operations, but we have to, right. And, and I think the thought process has been, you know, we want to make sure we get the right fit. Um, you know, so it looks like I've already found who my director of football operations will be. Believe it or not, that was my first, that was one of the first hires I wanted to make. Um, and then hopefully by the end of this week, you know, we've been doing interviews and as such, and hopefully, you know, we should be done by the end of the week with who our, you know, offensive staff, my, our new addition to our offensive staff and our new addition to our defensive staff. So um, I think that, uh, that that's the thought process. We've, we've had some you guys would be surprised with the amount of people that have that have called and and have offered, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, not acknowledgments or or, or, or uh, just say, Coach Coles, you should t- talk to this guy or recommendations right. and right. things and right. such. Right. Yeah. So um, it's it's a well sought out position. People are looking to come to a program that just won a national championship. So um, the the numerous phone calls, the numerous recommendations was expected. Um, so we try to keep it close to the chest. We, you know, we had three or four people on each side of the football. We've interviewed them. We got one or two more tomorrow. And then hopefully by Friday, I'm able to, you know, sew up the staff and get ourselves ready for spring practice. Okay. So, and, and, and to tie into that, we are coming off a championship run. We do have a good core of players and coaches returning. You are part of that. So talk about man, uh, being able to meet the moment, so to speak. So, you know, the expectations are going to be what they are. Yeah. <laughs> it's going, you know, it's going to be championship, right? Yeah. But you know, that's last year's last year. This is this year's team. So, so they got to, you know, get get back started. So, talk about your philosophy. Just like when Nick Saban left Alabama, a lot, a lot of people would be concerned about falling legends and, and having high expectations. Talk about your philosophy and falling, uh, you know, a legend and having high expectations with this team. Well, I, I think people don't realize how important this thing is to our players. Um, I think people really, really need to understand that, you know, for the first month, right, them guys were in there 530 in the morning, 830 in the morning, 330 in the afternoon getting after it. Right. Like that was the whole month of January lifting Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. And, you know, just this past Tuesday, Right. They were, you know, they were still lifting Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, this, you know, two, well, today's Wednesday. Yesterday, we added on top of them our fourth quarter drills. Well, we're also, get, again, getting up at six o'clock in the morning and we're doing agilities. And we, you know, we had 97 guys out there Tuesday uh, and they were getting, they were just, it was, it was, it was as if we were looking at last year's team getting ready to make that championship run. So, you know, you got JP Pruitt. You know, a guy who's going to be a really, really good player for us, challenging himself. Kendall Bowler, who was on all conference, all swat corner, uh, who ended up, who was on a couple all American lists this past year, challenging himself, challenging his teammates, right? You know, uh, uh, Kelvin Dean, the, the, the offensive MVP for the Celebration Bowl, again, challenging himself, challenging his teammates, right? So it's not hard to meet the moment when the guys are doing everything imaginable to get themselves back. To, to where we finish, right? So, you know, it, it, to me, you know, I, I have my own little wrinkles when I'm, you know, when, on what I'm asking our guys to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to be my own man in this process. But, you know, Coach Simmons did a heck of a job of, of building that foundation where the changes that I have to make aren't a lot. You know, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna still yell family. We're going to still do, we're going to still do the Lord's Prayer, you know, after every practice. You know, we're going we're gonna to meet every single thing that we did in the past. But do I have some changes that I'm, that I'm throwing in there? Absolutely. But it's not going to be something that's going to be earth shattering to our football team. I need our guys to be our guys. That's what they're doing. I need our guys to be the leaders. I need our guys to show up to lifts. I need them to attend class. I need them to make sure that they're giving me their best when they're on the football field. 
And as long as they do that, the, the, the moment will be met because we should be where we need to be, especially at the talent that we have on our football team. Coach, why were you the right guy for this job? You know, a lot of what Rattler Nation was talking about and wanting continuity was because we felt like we had a championship pedigree that you all had built collectively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they didn't, we didn't want to see that bothered with, so to speak. But why, is, why, how do you feel about the fact, you know, you as the head coach now and, and having some experience, understanding the roster, understanding uh, how we operate as a university, understanding, you know, the, the staff and the strengths and the weakness and so forth. How does that benefit you? as you step into the role as the head ball coach? Well, I mean, I think with the familiarity aspects with the transfer portal, right? You know, you a lot of the guys that were rallying around me and, you know, and, and hoping that I would get, the, would get the nod was, you know, because they know me, right? I, I think I did the last couple of years. I, I, you know, I was coaching the defensive backs and coaching the corners and coaching the defensive backs with Coach Morgan. I think, you know, we, we spent a lot of time with other players, right? You know, there's, there's stuff that, you know, there's, there's, it's it, Jalen Goss needing something for me was not something out of the ordinary. You know, he needed me to make a phone call, right? That wasn't out of the ordinary for him asking me that because him and I had a relationship before I was being, before I was named the head coach, right? You know, Junior Mayor Stovic, right? Like him, you know, him him needing something or, or asking me or whatever the case may be for something that was normal for him, not just now, but throughout the years. So, you know, I, I thought, I thought, you know, having that relationship with those guys outside of football, I think they understood that to me it was bigger than football. Um, and, and so I, I think that went a long way. Um, but, you know, you know, these guys really, really love Florida. And they really, really love it. Right. And, and, you know, again, trust me with, with my resume or whatever I had done previously, if I was not at Florida a and then I would not have been the guy that would have been well received as the head football coach here. Right. So, you know, just being around them, understanding them, them needing me for certain things or whatever the case may be. And then, you know, I think, I think the guys saw me work with my individual position that I had as well. Right, we worked them hard. We, you know, we I, they know I they know I demanded my demand the best from those guys and from them. So I think they, they know that I'm going to demand that from them as well. So you know, and I think I think the 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 you know Coach Simmons, uh, you know, speaking highly of me, right, giving me the assistant head coach title last year. You know that that said a lot as well. Like hey, like when if if or when Coach Simmons leaves, you know, possibly the next guy could be James Cozy the third, especially with him sitting as the assistant head coach. All right. That's uh, it's in, it's interesting, important that you said that about just that relationship that you had with all of the players. I mean, you know, I think that was that was kind of interesting because, you know, obviously a lot of times people may think, oh, he's just a position coach and maybe he's not as connected with the offense. Uh, but but as you just talked about, you're building you built. What was it that uh, allowed you to be able to build those relationships with not just obviously your position group, but the other side of the ball as well. What 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 kind of things, or maybe speak to your personality, or just things that allowed for that um, relationship to grow? Well, it's just just in my past, you know, I, I knew, you know, I I coached I coached Kendall Bowler, I, I coached PJ Bowler, I coached Eric Smith throughout my two years here. I, I used to see them all the time, you know what I mean? And and I, I remember, you know, from my previous coaches in my past, they would always tell me as a young coach, it's important to know the other side. You know, I'm going to talk to Smith, Eric Smith all day. So before practice, I, before practice, me and the offensive line do something before every single practice. We always have this little slap that we all, this little clap that we would always do. And, and then, you know, during that time, during stretching, I, I'm, I'm always going to do something with the running backs, right? And, uh, you know, before every game, you know, with Junior Musa, with, with Musa, with Jordan Musa, him and I had a hug and we would always talk before the game. So, you know, little things like that, I think, went a long way. Um, you know, and, and again, just when you see him in the when you see him in the hallway, just you know, I never, I very rarely ask him about football. I mean, how's your family doing, right? How's how's your girlfriend? How's your significant others doing? And how are you doing in classes, right? So, you know, just just those little those little notions, those little those little questions, those little conversations ended up being even bigger conversations because we had stuff to talk about after the fact, right? So, you know, I, I think when when it was all going down and the players that were speaking for me are speaking. You know, for me, you know, there was a lot more. There was a lot of offensive players speaking for me. You know, right. defensive guys. They, you know, I saw them. Coach Cozy, hope you get it, et cetera, et cetera. But I think oftentimes, you know, I had some offensive guys that were speaking for me as well, and 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 I thought that that went a long way. Yeah, de definitely, definitely it did. Okay, well, Coach, one of the the big questions regarding positions now, or before we get into talking about some of these uh, upcoming recruits, 
um, that that you signed in a, in a first class, a great first class, by the way. Um, uh, you talked about that recruiting, well, the uh, the football op position. And I remember you saying that was one of the ones you you really wanted to get uh, yeah. in, in house so you can get some of that paperwork off your, off your desk. I said, <laughs> hey, hey, uh, if you guys only do off screen, coach is shuffling papers left and right. Coach is like this. They have papers over here. And I'm like, I, I know. Coach is like, I got to get some of these paperwork off my desk. Um, and then obviously you, you're, you're looking to uh, – name an OC, a DC, um, but talk a little, everyone's asking about the recruiting coordinator position. Um, I know we, Coach Riz, Coach Riz Press uh, really made a strong name for himself over the last two years. Will you be looking to bring someone in to specifically fill that role this first year, or maybe is that something that you're looking to do in the future? Talk a little bit about that position, if, if you will. Well, I mean, let's first and foremost, you know, Coach Riz heading to Colorado just was a testament to how what hard hard he worked and the amount of success that we had here at Florida A&M. Um, you know, and and I don't I don't want to negate when that position itself. I you know I was really really uh, you know I was hoping to maybe hire someone before signing day. You know, because the importance of signing day. Um, but then after we did hit signing day and, and we know we, we were able to keep, you know, the majority of the guys that we had signed and that were, you know, that were already on our campus. Um, you know, that's going to be my fourth position that I would say that I'm, that I'm going to hire. But the fact remains, it still remains to me that I still need to have that done by spring before we start spring practice, because spring recruiting will start, you know, three to four weeks after that. So um, will I bring somebody in? Yes, for sure. Uh you know, will he have the, the, the charisma? Will him and her have the charisma? I, I highly doubt they're going to have the charisma that Coach Riz had. But um, I think the position that, that I'm going to that I'm looking for is someone that's going to be similar to him, right? A guy who had great contacts, a guy who understood Tallahassee, a guy who understood you know Florida A&M, and uh, and is going to understand the needs that we're going to need for this football team. So you know, I, I have a couple ideas of who I want it to be and what I'm looking for. Uh, but I also, but I'm also going to need that position to make sure that they're extremely tight and extremely disciplined on the other side of campus. You know, that's going to be extremely important to me, making sure that we're handling our paperwork, making sure we're handling all the things necessary for the other side of the campus to be happy with us, not just on the football field, but also how we're handling ourselves on the paperwork aspect. Mm -hmm. We got that. Understood. Uh, okay. Also, um, you've talked about not changing much from the defensive perspective. Uh, I think you, I, I won't pin you in, but I thought you said you're going to probably stick with the four, two, five. Um, and a lot of things defensively work so well, you were a part of that group. So you don't see too many things changing offensively though. And with bringing in a new OC, is there a style that you want to see or, or, and, you know, whatever you can give us, you know, because that's what people are itching for. What can you tell us about, dare I say it, offensive philosophy uh, or, or what kind of things are you wanting to be able to do on the offensive side of the ball, coach? Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I want you to go back to the tape because I never <laughs> once said that I was looking for an O.C. Oh, okay. <laughs> an offensive coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, okay. uh, but, you know, I, I'll say this. Um you know, the way we ran our offense the last couple of years, and especially this past year, that did a, that did marvels for us on defense. Um, you know, all, all of the coming out in one formation and then shifting to another and then bringing motion, uh, you know, that, that actually helped us out a bunch because when teams would do that to us, we were, we were ready for it. We, were, we understood what it meant. We understood that our communication had to be better. Now, the same thing that we've done the last couple of years, not looking to change that at all. So extremely similar to our defense, how I'm not going to change very much with that either. So yes, you guys can let it rattle and think about who it's going to be. But my whole thing is not to change anything on either side of the football. And we can't forget about what we're doing on our special teams. Our special teams coordinator was with us this past year as well. Um, you know, for me, uh, if, if I'm bringing anyone in, uh, it, it will be someone that is, has the understanding of what we do on offense and defense. So 425 will stay the same. Offensively, I love our shifts. I love our motions. I love our formations. And believe me when I tell you this, this the announcements will come a lot sooner than people think. Um, it, it, they, they, they've, they've already been made. Um, I, you know, again, the key word was continuity. Uh, and I want, and I, I, and I'm not going away from that. If I was going to do all of these changes, then why hire me to begin with? Um, and I, and I truly, truly understand that. I fully grasp that situation. 
And I know our players are going to be extremely happy with what I'm going to do as well. And I want to make sure that they understand that as well. You don't want to break any news right here live on the show, do you, Coach? I, not yet, not yet. Oh, but okay, I think you guys okay. already know what the news is. But I, I you know, I got there's there's there's, there's, there's university policies I, got, I must yeah, follow. Sure. I'm able to say certain things. Um, but you know, again, I'm 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 extremely happy with what we're doing. We've yeah. installed some things already over the last couple of days. So um, you know, our guy, our again, I I I wish you guys could see how how our guys are going about business right now. And, uh, and 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 trust me, that we're, we're, you know, making a run, running back. I know we got a lot of different phases that are going on right now, but our guys are committed to the work. The staff is committed to the work. And uh, and, I, and I think you guys are going to be extremely excited about what we do and what we're, what we're bringing to the 2024 season. Gotcha, gotcha. Kelvin, you want to get in there, maybe get in the yeah. recruits, or what, what do you got? Well, well, before we get into the recruits, uh, I'm interested for Coach to tell us how is he going to pr- approach spring we got a very challenging fall schedule. We got two uh, FBS opponents. Um, we play two MEAC opponents, and then we got the the, the SWAT schedule. So this is a very challenging um, schedule coming up. Twelve games, two buys. But in terms of the spring, how how do you approach what you want to get accomplished? And then the spring game itself is it going to be similar to what previous spring games, or you got some wrinkles you want to do with it? Well, I, I think there are some things practice-wise that I that I may change, but I don't think I'm going to do that in the spring. I would do that more so in the fall. Um, you know, we we are. I don't want to say we, you know we're a little limited as far as our defensive line right now. Um, you know, and th- th- that's that's a couple. I think we need a couple more guys at that position. Um, so you know, we're, we're you know myself and and, and uh, Coach Patterson and Coach Henry right now we're discussing how we want to maybe um, uh, handle. Whether we want to do whether we want to do control scrimmages, whether we want to um, you know do the game again, uh, so we're still kind of going back and forth with that. Uh, so, but um, what well, Rico's I, I know that when you have new play callers, right? I think it's important, and I, I don't want to wait till the first game of the year to see if these guys can call an offense or see if they can call a defense just yet. So you have a lot more you have a lot more situations that we would do during the spring. Uh, put our guys to, a, you know, to, to the coming out situations, the red zone situations where, you know, a lot, there'll be a lot less scripts where hey, look, I need you to make, we need to make calls, right? Let's get, mm-hmm. let's, let's start calling these things like games, even though they might be situations, but let's just start calling these things like games, like, like we're in a game situation on both sides of the field. Um, I, I will do some more special teams in the spring. You know, a lot of times in the spring when you do special teams, you know, you're doing it on air. No, I, I don't want to necessarily do it on air. I want to find some I want to find some really, really good special teams players during our spring so then they can be better in the fall. So, you know, there'll be a lot more competitions, you know, like right. last year we had, we, you know, last year we, we, we already knew who the quarterback was going to be. We already knew who our Mike linebacker was going to be. We had a firm grasp of who our summer O-liner, our O-liner will be. So, you know, we'll, we'll be a little bit more live than maybe normal. A little bit more competition. Uh, I want to. I want to see guys finish with the ball. I want to see how they finish when the ball's in the air. How they finish on blocks. So there may be a little bit more competition as far as what we do. But um, you know, there'll be more game-like situations. I think in the spring that than, than maybe people are accustomed to. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Let's let's get into. I just want to. I, I don't want to go through the entire recruits, coach, because I know you you did all that earlier. But let's try to hit on a few names of interest in Kelvin. I, I'll go through a couple and if you got a couple that you want to to talk on, uh let's go. But let's let's start with uh two two of the uh recruits that'll come in and obviously Daniel Richardson. Um <laughs> I yeah I tell you coach that the I, I think is great for you uh and great for the program that you get a new coach and you get an opportunity to kind of lay the seed and foundation for this season with a new quarterback. And Daniel Richardson, a new recruit, you've already got three good guys that are in the room from last year, maybe four actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't want to don't want to cut anybody short. And then you bring in Daniel Richardson and also Austin Hooker. What I know Richardson has been there already working. Um talk a little bit about the quarter room quarterback room or that group in general. I, I don't want to put you in a spot and kind of say spotlight one guy or the other, but, but just talk about what kind of things are you going to be looking for? That's going to separate these guys um, 
and and that fans can sort of kind of pay attention to uh, through the course of the spring as we get closer to August when you do actually name or or whoever QB one is for or for game one. Well, I, I'll first and foremost say you know it's going to be extremely hard to replace Jordan Musa, right? We already know we already know he had you know he 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 controlled the room you know over the last two years. It didn't matter who we brought in. Quarterback was going to be Jordan Musa, you know, for the 22 and 23 season. Um, so now, you know, losing a guy like that and then having the opportunity to bring a guy at the FBS level like a Daniel Richardson, who, you know, he's thrown for almost 5,000, 6,000 yards at the FBS level. Um, you know, it was somewhat of a no brainer to be completely honest with you, right? We, um, when he, he came in before, right? He was, when Coach Simmons was, was hired, was, was still our head coach. Um, and then everything kind of went down when Coach Simmons left. Him and Dan- Daniel and I had a, had, a, had a very, very good conversation about his future at Florida a you know, and we both thought it was important, regardless of whether I was named or whatever the case may be, we thought it was important for him to be here, right? If you were going to be here as opposed to flip-flopping, going everywhere you wanted to go, he wanted to be somewhere where it would be a firm opportunity to be the starter at Florida a So, you know, obviously, you know, Junior leaves. I mean, not Junior, uh, Musa leaves. Right. And then you got a guy like Junior who's been backing up Musa, you know, for the last couple of years, who's, you know, who's looking for his opportunity as well. So, you know, you got you got some guys that are in the room that have ability. You got some guys in the room that have stats. You have some guys that have won the Rattler uniform and have won and have won games as starters. Right. So the biggest thing that I'm going to be looking for from that position is just decision making. Right. You know, put 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 getting the ball in the hands of our guys. Right. And then when it's all said and done, you know, is it is, do we do we throw the ball over the top to try to take a chance? Or do we take the check down to get the ball to Kelvin Dean or get the ball to our tight ends and, and get and get good yardage from that position, right? So, you know, that's going to be the biggest thing for me. I know, I know on the offensive side, we're, we're looking for a leader as well, you know, and, and Daniel and Junior have done a great job in the weight room. Um, it's just, as, 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 you know, installing the type of leader that they'll be, uh, you know, setting up our throw around, setting up our walkthroughs, things like that. So, you know, going to need a leader, going to need a guy who's going to make very, very good decisions back there. And uh, obviously, a guy who can spin the football, but uh, and but getting the ball to our receivers, who you know, who you know, you got Jamari Gassett, you got Kareem Burke, you got our tight ends, Kobe Gross and JP Pruitt. Just hey, get the ball to them, then let them do the rest, you know. And then, but you're also they're gonna and they're gonna have a real good test going against our defense, where you know we've been pretty opt- opportunistic, right? So we'll, you know, if you can if you can beat us on defense, that means you probably have an opportunity to beat a lot of the other teams in the conference. So mm-hmm. hey, make the right decisions. Right. Hey, it's, it's OK to punt on fourth down if we have to. Uh, don't want don't want any turnovers. So those are and, and I'm looking at what type of leader you're going to be on the field and off the field. So, you know, again, we've got two guys that are that have kind of taken the reins a little bit. The guys that are kind of behind them behind them right now, they're, you know, they're, they're doing a good job of learning. Um, and again, it's an offense. The only one who's really having to learn this offense right now is Daniel. Right. All these other guys have already been in it. They know that they know the verbiage. They know the terminology. So. You know, again, Daniel's going to have to make that adjustment to what we call things as opposed to bringing a whole new set in that everyone has to work with. So we get that benefit. Coach Henry, Coach Carter, Coach Wyndham, you know, those those guys on the offensive side, our GAs and our QCs, they're all installing that system. They're all helping Daniel Richardson along. But for me, let's just make good decisions. I need a quality leader. And then when it's all said and done, let's get the ball in the hands of our athletes so, so we can allow them to make plays. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, and and one other name from the defensive side, Kelvin, and I'll give it to you, uh, Breckian Harold. Uh, I heard you. I saw you talk about him, and you're you you lit up when you talked about the freshman from Shamada Madonna, Breckian Harold, and you all you you were you almost said something to the effect of, "Oh, he, he's a young man that is going to have an opportunity." To make that first and second, I'm I'm paraphrasing here. You didn't say it, but I'm paraphrasing my interpretation of what you were saying. Is that is a young man who's gonna get an opportunity from the jump because he's that good. Talk a little bit about Breckian uh, and, and that program at Shamada Madonna and just what you what you liked about this young man's future in Orange and Green. Well, first and foremost, I mean, you get a young man who was who was a Division One recruit, right? A true true Division One recruit and. Uh, you know, you know that that portal is, is is hurting high school kids about about as much as anybody in the country. And um, a young a young man who had some 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 FBS uh, offers um, at some programs that decided to go the portal route, 
Um, and, you know, Coach Jones, who's the head football coach at Shaman Madonna, I, I believe it or not, I was, you know, I, it was the weekend that I was named the head coach, but I went down there and, you know, I, I got a chance to talk to Coach Jones and we talked about the young man. And, uh, and, and he basically said, hey, coach, like this guy is was supposed to be at some schools. He did not have the opportunity or I mean, he was offered um, and they pulled the offer because they went the transfer portal route. Then he walks in. He's every bit of six one. He's every bit of six one six two. Every bit of three hundred pounds, you know. And, and I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch Shaman Madonna at the state yes. championship game. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> he, he might have been the second or third best guy on the field, mm-hmm. you know, because of the things that he was doing, right? And um, so you know, it was a no brainer for me. Obviously, academically, we had to make sure he was up to par. He was. He is. Um, you know, he's a young man that wanted to see FAMU and, and he came and Friday night he committed. So we didn't even have to finish the entire visit. He was already coming. So, you know, that that's just a tribute to our campus. That's a tribute to the students. That's a tribute to the faculty that he met, our staff that he met. Uh, and, and so, you know, for, for a guy like that, who's got division one talent, you know, he's lifting almost 400. He's a bencher of almost 450 pounds. I mean, it, it's a guy that, you know, you, you just hope can understand the defense, Understand the, the bigger of how hard it is to be a Division One college football athlete. Um, you know, you worry about those little things, but as a football player, he's got a really, really good chance for us. You know, and, and Coach 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 Patterson did a hell of a job of. of you know, my, my reason for saying that about him making a contribution was Coach Patterson did a hell of a job last year of using almost five to six interior defensive linemen. That's what we do. You know, we just don't play two. You know, so if a guy was coming in at that with those with those numbers. That type of ability, you know, if he can get into that, that five or six numbers as guys we use, you know, you know that that's a tribute to how good he is, but that's also a tribute to us, our defense, to you know having the ability to put him in. Now, if we if he doesn't make it or he doesn't understand, rest assured he won't be in there. But if he does, he does have he does give us a great opportunity to just control the middle. You know, don't 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 forget we got ninety two, we got ninety nine, we yeah. got some guys uh-huh. in there that have, that have won some quality football games for us, but. Every once in a while, if they got a rest, that would only make them even better at the end of the third or at the end of the fourth quarter. So if we, you know, we if we can get Harold uh, awesome experience early, that'll be great for him, but that'll also be great for us. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, Kelvin, who are your who are your two guys? Well, I'm I'm gonna weave two 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 together. One person who's uh who's recommitted, <laughs> and then then I want them to talk about the kids who are. Or were in the portal. I'm trying to figure out are are the kids who went in the portal who are already on the team are they still in the portal? Who's still in the portal? Who's still out? But but of course the 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 person I'm, I'm referring to that recommitted was uh the running back from Florida State, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um I happen to have watched this guy myself from the field level for the last couple of years and in, in the spring games and then on on, on game day and so forth. Uh, and um, the kid is extremely talented. Yeah. Of, of course, he played for a team that went 13-0 and and has an NFL, two NFL running backs in front of him, and he right. still played. And when he played, he was, uh, you know, he had he put up good numbers and so forth. So talk about, you know, the, the whole re-recruiting of him, number one, and that relationship. And then the second part to the question is talk about the kids who who are on the team that, Still are in the portal, or whether they they out of the portal. Okay. Um. I well, Ronnie Hill. When, when everything kind of went down with him, when he committed, uh, obviously everyone's excited. You know, you then you immediately go to his highlights, and he's running through LSU defensive players and things of that nature. And um, you know, he committed to us and was was excited was excited about the opportunity. Um. And then obviously when everything happens with Coach Simmons, you know, he decommits. But believe it or not, from our decommitments that we had during that time frame, you know. Rodney Hill was one of the guys I still was speaking to. Um, look, man, hey, let this unfold. You know, I, I think you can have a great opportunity here. Um, and then obviously, then, you know, then he goes to Miami, right? He's committed to Miami. So then once he committed to Miami, you know, to me, regardless, I, I, I all bets were off with me after that. I said, hey, man, you're committed to Miami. You know, uh, it's a great opportunity. So I, I, I left it alone. Um, so after doing that, you know, about a few days while school starts, you know, um, he's a like, coach. I mean, are you – I get a phone call, you know, and, and are you still, are you still interested in me? And I'm like, well, like, well first of all, who are you? You know, <laughs> who, who am I interested in? And I, and he says his name and I, I get up from my, my desk and, uh, you know, coach, coach, uh, coach Wyndham, our running back coach, he's, he's obviously excited because he knew I was getting ready to get the phone call and et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, then we had, we had a little work to do to, to get him into school. 
Um, our, our, our AD did a great job to, you know, to, to, to assist us and to get him into school and things of that nature. So, um, you know, again, he was, he was a no brainer, right. You know, but, but, you know, before he did commit to UM, the conversation with him was, was extremely, was extremely productive. You know, we talked about, we talked about the ability of, you know, of being, being the guy or being one of the guys at, at the position, you know, and, you know, obviously our the success that we had last year with Jennings and, and Yant and, and Dean, can show that we could you could be successful with two three running backs regardless of the situation. So, um, but for him, I think you know he he, he loved he loved the city of Tallahassee. Uh, we, got, we got a great opportunity to keep him here, um, and you know again I mean you know you you he he's, he went through our morning drills Tuesday. He's been through our lifts, and right now he's just trying to catch up academically, uh, trying to catch up in the weight room. And I think once we get that done with him, you know we should see the same running back we saw while he was running and gone in the gold. Um, guys that are in the portal uh, right now, there's only one guy that is still in the portal. The other guys that that were in, um, I'm not, I don't know if I can actually say that or not, but gotcha. but what? Believe it or not, there's only one that's still in. Um, and uh, so you know, the other ones that were in, and you know, they're they're now out. They they were all at the they were all a part of the '96 on the field uh, Tuesday morning. So you know, we got one yeah. still still you know waiting, and, yeah. and and again, that's what they're allowed to do. Right. Yeah. There's no penalty. There's no judgment for me. That's what yeah. the NCAA is allowing them to do. Believe me, when he decides to come back, there'll be a lot of open arms waiting on him to come back. And uh, once he does, then we'll be excited for him. And if he decides to go somewhere else, we'll still be we'll still be excited for him because the guy did a great job for us, uh, you know, for the two years, especially for the two years that I've been in. All right, coach. I want you. This is your introduction, even though you've had other interviews. This is your introduction to Rattler Nation. Okay. Uh, I know a little bit about your history and your your family's history and so forth, but I want you to talk about, you know, your your history and your family. All the Rattler Nation don't know your your history, so just talk about your your South your South Florida roots, your family, and all that good stuff. Well, I, my mom told me to be humble, so now you now you <laughs> having me go against my mother. It um, is what it is, coach. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think. Well, you know, I, I will. I'll, I'll guess I'll start with my grandfather. My grandfather, James Cozy Sr., he's in the Negro League Hall of Fame. Um, you know, he, he was a Negro League pitcher, uh, you know, and we all know why we had the Negro Leagues back then. Um, after, you know, uh, my uncles and my aunts, uh, you got my uncle, my Uncle Neil, first round job pick for the Oakland Raiders in the mid-70s, uh, all pro, uh, all pro safety. He was he was the big safety back in the days. He was every bit of 6'2", 210 pounds, maybe bigger than that. My dad used to say, but he, but he went to Ohio State. I uh, was an All American there. Um, my uncle Rick Cozy was the first black baseball player at FSU in the 70s. Uh, he was a, he he played in the Cleveland Indians organization. I had, a, I had an uncle Anthony Cozy who was a big time basketball player down in South Florida, and he played at Albany State. Uh, my aunts, they uh, they were all they were all track athletes. Albany State, uh, all, you know, they were all Albany State grads. Went there. Um, so after that, you know, I guess, I guess that's myself, you know, I had a great, great opportunity to play football and baseball. I was blessed with the opportunity to play football and baseball at Florida State, uh, played four years of football, year and a half of baseball. Um, and, um, you know, so I was cornerback, you know, I, I, I was too big. I was, I, I wasn't big enough to play anything else, but, uh, you know, I was a two year starter during the, uh, you know, 96, 90, me, 95, 96 season. Um, I think I finished with like nine interceptions, but everyone wants to talk about the one that I had. But hell, I had nine. Uh, you know, but from that, from that time frame, after all that, bounced around with Tampa Bay Buccaneers, played in the minor leagues with the Montreal Expos. But but, but from um, you know from the year of 1999, I've coached college football. Um, I, I, I think the, that's all I've done. You know, I, I started off at FIU, started their program. I was one of the very first, first coaches there. Came back to Florida State as a GA uh, to work with Coach Bowden through the 04 07 season. And we all know the trials and the tribulations as a football coach. You know, you're going to move a lot of places. So during that time frame, I've lived in Valdosta, Georgia. I've lived in Carrollton, Georgia. I've lived in Magnolia, Arkansas, Vancouver, uh, back to Coffeyville, back to Vancouver, lived in Halifax. And now I'm back in Tallahassee for my third stop. So I'm hoping this is my last stop, to be honest with you. I think that you get, you get an opportunity to be in a place for a long time. You know, you get a chance to. I know my wife's tired of moving uh, and, and whatnot, but um, I think, you know, this is a place where you can hopefully retire. But, you know, to retire and be here for a long time, you got to have success. 
You know, and I, I quite under, I know I know I know full that you know I, we we ain't tolerate no bull job uh, here at Florida and M. And I know the expectations are high. I understand that the expectations are high, and believe me, my expectations are high as well. So, um, you know, again, been, been around a lot of good places, been, been been around a lot of good people. I've had a lot of good players to help with my success. Uh, but trust me when I say this, man, I'm, this is the best job in the country, and I'm not just saying this as because this is. You know, when when we went maybe that different route earlier in January, and, and you know, and, and then now coming to the coming full circle to getting the opportunity, you know, I can't. I, I had to, I had to thank. I had to call a lot of people because a lot of prayers were given to me, and they they were answered once I was given this opportunity. So um, I don't take it lightly. Uh, I want the, the Rattler fans to understand that I'm not taking this job lightly. The, we're not taking this as a as as a job as a carryover to something else. Believe me, that is not the case. The plan is to be here for a very, very long time and to hoist numerous trophies throughout my tenure. Well said, Coach. Well said. Well said. Um, a couple of quick, just off-the-cuff questions for you okay. here, Coach. Uh, fans have uh, sent us emails and, of course, in the chat room. Um, what do you like to – when you're not thinking about football, what do you like to do in your spare time? Um. Wow. Sit down. To be honest with you, I like to sit down. You know, that's an opportunity. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big I, – I, if I'm not – Playing it or coaching, I, I, I like sports. Um, you know, you know, I got chance. You guys were talking about the Super Bowl. I got a chance to watch the Super Bowl. And any, any, I'm a big time Celtic fan. You know, my, I'm, I'm a fan of teams that my dad didn't like. That was, that was my dad and I's fight. So if it tells you, if I tell you that I'm a Celtic fan, what, what, what fan would my dad have been? He's a Laker fan. There you go. So, so you know, so, so I'm, I'm a, I'm a big time North Carolina fan because in the '80s it was Michael Jordan. So. If I don't know a Carolina fan, that means my dad was what fan? What, what, what's my fan? Duke. He was a Duke fan. But believe it or not, he was a Georgetown fan. So he oh, was Georgetown. a okay. Georgetown. Okay. Okay. But, you know, because of North Carolina's national championship game in 82. Right. So, oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I, I, if I'm not coaching it, I, I'm a big fan of watching it. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll believe me on bye weeks. I'm, I'm, if I'm not doing film, I'm, I'm watching every single game from 12 o'clock till 730 that night. So I'm, I'm watching the sporting event more than likely. All right, what's what's your favorite food? You know, people want to know. They might be sending you stuff, coach. They might be sending you dishes and preparing foods for you, especially when you get to that two twenty club meeting. Nah, what's yeah, your favorite yeah, food? What's your favorite I mean, food? I mean, the smoke ribs. Ooh, I'm, I'm a okay. smoke rib guy, and I need and I needed to be on top of something. If it's on top of something, uh, whatever it is, whatever. As long as it's on top of something, so I can you know I can dig it out and see what it is. I'm good with that. Now my mom, my mom made cabbage, you know, and and, and she. So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a cabbage guy as well. Uh, but uh, but if it's smoked ribs on top of something, you know you can't you can't go wrong. Okay, it's good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, one other question about now you you're on social media. You've got yeah. your your uh, your social media handle. Uh, are, are you uh, are you act are you active with the, with the Twitter and the Instagram? Well, or what I you? am, and, and believe it or not, I was I, my, my players are killing me. They're like, Cody, man, you are you are <laughs> um, you are a public figure. You need it. So, so, so I, and I believe it or not, when, when everything went down on Saturday, so on Saturday, believe it or not, I was, I was in Miami, Florida, Saturday. So the, the announcement happens on Saturday. I'm in Miami, Florida. Believe it. I had, I was, I was on the road recruiting and I had already gotten the phone call from uh, Miss Sykes and Miss Sykes was like, cozy. I need you to, you know, I need you to get a suit. So I went, I had to go get a suit uh, when, when everything was going on. And so while that, while that happened, I actually put my, I, I put my phone away. Like, I'm like, look, man, let me, I was in the mall with my sisters and we were just walking and talking. So I put my phone away. So that Sunday we had church. Um, again, not looking at my phone every once in a while, just, you know, saying thank you to whoever texted me. Well, from that time, I think I had about 400 or 500 requests on both sides. So I already knew where they were coming from. So I was like, man, I can't sit up here and do all of that. So now I, I'm kind of, kind of going back and forth or whatever the case may be. Well, I, I, I now have, I think, 1,700 and something on, on IG. And like, nah, I don't even know how many people on Twitter because they don't tell you how many people you got requesting you. So I'm, I'm working my way through it. Uh, Kelvin Dean has promised me that he will be able to one that. He's like, Coach, I got to get – give me your phone. I'm going to take care of your settings because you got you to get off of private. I'm like, well, all right. So, yes, to answer your question, I will be. Um, and, and I'll be thankful to Kelvin Dean. I think I just, I think I just accepted you guys tonight. So, yeah. Yeah. and I think you guys said that three weeks ago. So I apologize, but I'm catching up and that'll be thankful to Kelvin Dean, but I'll be real, real, uh, I'll be real, real uh, active on my social media from here on out. 
And uh, and by the way, that's a good looking suit, though. That's I suit. appreciate you're looking, it. You're looking I sharp. Try. You're looking I sharp. Try. I try. I try. I mean, well, you look look at the crew I'm with. They were all dressed good, so I knew I had to. I knew I had to tighten my game up as well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. There it is. Coach looking fresh, fresh and clean. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh Kelvin, any any final questions that you want to just quickly get in there with Coach? He's been gracious with his time. So, uh, any anything last that you want to ask, Coach? No, no questions. Just want to congratulations. Uh, I, I, a lot of people are very optimistic and excited for this, uh, for, for you and this opportunity and have great confidence that you, the staff, the team, um, you all will uh, make us proud as you always do anyway. And we'll have, as you did last season, um, Rally Nation is behind you. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of us went to bat to try to, you know, just make sure that where we stood was known. <laughs> you know, we other than the decision was the decision, but we did try to make sure, you know, hey, this is this is where we at, you know. So congratulations. Look excited to hear, you know, how your staff is gonna shake out and and, and, and you know, and, and excited to see your program continue to to, to move forward and be successful. I, I appreciate this guys. And believe me, I've I've heard you guys before and you guys are doing an amazing job. And maybe, maybe, maybe we have a, a call next week when I announce the staff. So maybe that's something that you guys decide you guys want to do. I'm Absolutely. Uh, and I, and I trust me, I, I appreciate everything you guys are doing, and, and I appreciate the fans. You know, believe me, I, you know, when they were doing all that HR stuff, I, I was just hoping that I was number sixteen. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and look, I guess I was. I don't know, but I, 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 all I knew was that number sixteen, that guy was damn good. Uh, whoever he was. Everybody loved that guy. <laughs> whoever he was, I knew he was damn good. So, but uh, again, I appreciate you guys and looking forward to doing this again. Uh, hopefully, I get a chance to got you know we do this again. Uh, but yeah. just keep in mind, April thirteenth, uh, spring game or spring scrimmage will happen. And uh, I know I think softball is playing that that afternoon. So we're gonna try to scale that back to give give a people the opportunity to come to both. Um, and uh, and and just want to say thanks again. And I'm I'm looking forward to doing this again. All right. Coach, coach our, our our platform is yours. Anytime you want, you got our email, you got our phone number. Anytime you want to get a message out to Rattler Nation, even yeah. if it's just uh behind the scenes, uh all you got to do is let us know. I mean, okay. we're we're here for for you and we tell all the coaches. Uh I know people have even talked about how they can continue to support the program. And I don't know mm -hmm. if that's just through the Rattler Athletic Fund or other means, but however you want us to communicate that to Rattler Nation. Yeah. Let us know, and, and we'll pass that along as well. Because uh, as you have seen, we come and support. We support our. We support ours. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. so uh, all you, all you gotta do is let us know. Whether it be for the assistant coaches or the players, just let us know, coach, and, and we'll we'll work on getting it done and making it happen. Hey, thank you very very much, guys, and, and continue doing a great job, guys. I really really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, coach. coach. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach James Colsey the third. Make sure to follow him at Coach Colsey on uh on Twitter or X and IG. Coach, have a good night. God bless you, Coach. We'll talk have soon. A good one, guys. All right. All right. Hey, that was awesome. That was awesome. It was. Hey, uh, uh, appreciate you he, guys. He's gonna do just fine. He's oh, yeah, man. man I, yeah, yeah. He's hey. we, we done good. We done good. <laughs> uh gotta appreciate all of you for your questions uh the folks uh who sent emails in uh alfred um alfred uh palmore ashley coleman tracy campbell nigel um i don't want to get the last name wrong uh but and, and the others those of you who who sent us questions whether it be on um uh the chats and so on and so forth, man. We we appreciate you. You know, it's always it's always kind of weird when 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 obviously you know coaches. He's been on. He's done some good interviews already. You know, with, with uh, Germany. Uh, shout out to Germany. Uh, Bozeman did a great job getting the first interview with Coach uh, on Rattler Plus. And uh, then I've heard Coach in a couple other places. Uh, and so it's like you're always wondering, trying, okay, what kind of what what haven't we heard? you know, from coach yet. So I thought you did a great job with the questions there, Kelvin. And uh, appreciate so you guys. You. Thank, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate all of you and Rattler Nation for um, for responding.